There is no reason why in 2023, these companies should not be including BIPOC people, period. If a brand is not being tone inclusive, then they honestly should not be even in this makeup industry in itself because there is more than one complexion. There are a vast range of people with different tones, different undertones. And if you cannot make makeup for everyone, what is the point of making a makeup product if not everyone can use it? Hi, my name is Gloria George. You might have seen me all over TikTok. I am a beauty slash lifestyle content creator. Growing up, there were no shades for me. In the store, there were no shades for me online. Like when I say like complexion was lacking growing up, complexion was lacking. It was really hard to conceptualize like why as well, because I feel like I, I knew I wasn't the only one that existed that was as dark as me. So I was just like, you know what? This is a really rooted issue. And I feel like this is something that other people are also going through. And I feel like it's important for people to hear it and the beauty industry to hear it. I actually have a series on TikTok across all my platforms called the Darkest Shade series. So I drew inspiration from Nima Tang. She is a South Sudanese beauty creator. Her resiliency was something that I just always like was just super into and proud of. It made me feel included. It made me feel like I was welcomed in this beauty space. I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit more short form, actually bringing people into the realm of what it's really like to, to shop as a dark skinned black woman in this beauty space. The number one companies that I think that are really like hitting the hitting the mark on tone inclusivity, especially this year, is House Labs, Fenty Beauty, and Rare Beauty. I think these three companies, although they are celebrity makeup companies, they're also fairly new, right? All of their complexion products and all the products that they've pushed out are so versatile and they literally work on everyone. I think that the biggest impact of the activism that I, I do on my platforms is I wanted to be a voice for my younger self. I knew that I had to make sure that I was speaking to other younger versions of myself, other dark-skinned Black young girls who also may feel this way or may have experienced the same amount of like bullying that I experienced. Although we may not be, you know, the beauty standard in itself, there's still beauty in our skin and there's still beauty in us. And I feel like also it's just, it's so important to talk about it because if we don't talk about it, if we are not advocating for ourselves, there is going to be no tangible change. I feel like in 2023, inclusivity should be a pillar in the company's statement and a company's values. And if it's not, you'll see it throughout the company. Like you'll see it throughout the products. You'll see it behind the scenes. You'll see it in the brand trips. You'll see it in who's getting these type of opportunities to work with these companies. And although it's really sad, I think that it's very important to actually have those open conversations about it because there can be active change. It's just whether or not you want to do the work to actually make that change. We deserve shades. We deserve to be included. We deserve complexion products. Like, it's literally the bare minimum. <laughs>